My first round for the times that I spit in the cell. The second round for the media and the lies they tell. The third round for the pain that I felt inside. Let's recognize. Rose, where are you going to get your fiber? Which I believe is also uh, rather necessary for good, uh, we'll call it digestive health. Uh, I, I don't know what to, what to say about fiber, but if you eat a lot of meat, you get fiber. Uh, I, I don't know what to, what to say about fiber, but if you eat a lot of meat, you get fiber. <laughs> Donald Miller Jr. is a retired cardiac surgeon turned supplement salesman with an interest in government conspiracies and high-fat, low-carb diets. Let's just acknowledge for a moment that he displayed his true comprehension of nutrition with that fiber comment. I want you to decide for yourself if it's a good idea to take nutritional advice from a man who would say something so ignorant. Donald Miller is probably best known for his 2011 speech, Enjoy eating saturated fats. They're good for you. I've noticed uh, that one of the themes of this meeting is the bad things that government do to our lives. And I will follow this theme in this talk uh, with regard to nutrition. Let's take a moment and recognize that his audience exists primarily within the libertarian right-wing spectrum where people are predisposed to distrust the government and establishment science. Now, I'm not saying you should trust everything the government says, but this is an important point about his target market. His strategy is to posture himself as a skeptic and then pitch to the audience's cynicism towards authority. The irony is that he uses his credentials as a heart surgeon to boost his credibility on the topic of nutrition, which, as we have seen, is questionable at best with his comment on meat and fiber. Statins follow the politically correct diet cholesterol theory of heart disease, also known as the lipid hypothesis. It says that eating, quote, artery-clogging saturated fats raise serum cholesterol, and high cholesterol causes obstructive plaques to form in coronary arteries through a pathologic process known as atherosclerosis. In, in looking at the evidence that saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease, uh, we see that the, the Ansel Key study that was so influ influential uh, with medical organizations in the government is bogus. Did you notice how he introduced the concept of the lipid hypothesis by calling it politically correct? The strategy is to create doubt. Ansel Keys was the preeminent early researcher on the relationship between diet and heart disease. Donald Miller thinks Keyes' research is bogus, but can only muster a regurgitation of the common low-quality arguments you find on low-carb blogs. Donald, you claim Keyes was biased and cherry-picked the data, but you didn't actually read any of his research because you're a bitch. Keyes explained in his research why he did not include several of the European countries. World War II impacted dietary habits in Europe, and countries like Mexico didn't even have death certificates back then. This man is a cholesterol denier. Well, what about cholesterol? Uh, as with saturated fat, it is not a villain. On the contrary, cholesterol is critical for good health. It is essential, an essential component of every cell in the body. And although few doctors know this, more than 20 studies have shown that elderly people with a high cholesterol level in their blood live longer than those who have a low cholesterol. Promoting the idea that high cholesterol is healthy when you are old is dangerous and deceptive. Here's what he's not telling you. Look at Jeremiah Stamler's research with an understanding of comorbidity and reverse causation. In populations eating a rich, standard American-style diet, cholesterol levels plummet later in life because people have spent their entire lives with elevated cholesterol, and other disease processes occur that affect serum cholesterol levels. Notice we don't see these plummeting levels later in life in the Japanese who don't eat a rich Western diet. He is essentially using this J-curve to make the claim that elevated cholesterol provides protective benefits later in life. He claims the Framingham study shows fat and cholesterol are healthy. 
But in fact, for people under the age of 50, Framingham shows a significant positive association between the incidence of coronary heart disease and the proportion of fat in the diet. The, the best meat to eat is that which is certified humanely treated or 100% grass-fed finished. Tell me more about humane killing. I call this the ideal healthy meat fantasy. Liberty-minded people and people raised in rural areas are particularly susceptible to this pitch. It invokes nostalgia from America's history of small farmers and a return to simpler times. We want to believe if only our meat were humanely pastured and grass-fed, then we would all be healthy. But this is not reality. This convenient fantasy sticks around as a nebulous idealization people can cite without changing their behavior. According to Donald Miller, the proper treatment plan for coronary artery disease is to ignore your doctor altogether and just purchase a dozen or so supplements. And he took the liberty of telling you what brands and dosage to order. Eating an abundance of whole plant foods doesn't fit his macro recommendation of 70% calories from fat. So beyond your typical vitamins and minerals, you also need concentrated plant extracts. Imagine the level of convenience he is offering his audience. Don't change your diet. Reverse heart disease with supplements and packets of extract purported to contain 8 to 10 servings of fruits and 8 to 10 servings of vegetables apiece. Of course, he sells these, quote, wellness products, unquote, and has his own hotline available to service your needs. But Donald, if the saturated fats you promote are so healthy, how come your wife developed coronary artery disease? Do genetics explain a coronary calcium score over 400, or could that have something to do with diet? People call us dogmatic for eating whole plant foods, but this guy is so anti-statins, he's treating his wife's heart disease with supplements and brags about giving advice to veterans post-op heart surgery not to take their cholesterol-lowering medication. And when I ran the heart program at the VA hospital in the last 10 years of my career, uh, one of the uh, quality metrics was giving statins to the patients after their surgery. And I would have to go by and start speaking their ear and tell them to take a low dose or just don't bother with that, give them a prescription. So enjoy eating saturated fats, they're good for you.